the sheer scale and horror. A mother cradling her young child there, being helped by a TV reporter and also a bystander. Understandably shocked, we see other parents with toddlers, buggies, people walking dogs, looking up to the sky and thinking that this beggars belief. We must, of course, remember that the Twin Towers are a landmark around the whole of New York. You can see them wherever you are. They're such visible, strong and magnificent structures, or indeed they were. So there are school children being helped across the road. There's a man who appears to have collapsed. And this just really on the periphery of the chaos that ensued. We're going to go now to um, New York. Let's speak to Ashley Bamfield, who is a reporter for NBC. Ms. Bamfield, are you there? Hello. Am I? Ashley Bamfield, are you there? Hi. Yeah, I can hear you. Ash it's a bit chaotic. It's nothing, can you nothing, hear me? nothing more than we would expect. We can hear you loud and clear. Can you describe to me the situation in the streets of Manhattan right now? Yeah, I can do the best I can. I, I, I'm having trouble hearing you, so let me just tell you what, what I'm seeing and what's happened in the last two hours since we've been here. I'm probably about uh, 20 or 25 blocks or so north of the actual site of where the World Trade Center has once stood. About uh, an hour and 20 minutes ago or so, a producer and I were both in the vicinity when the second tower came down. We were caught in that explosion, and at least in the, in the cloud that, uh, that ensued, and we were forced to break windows of... Uh, of an apartment building nearby just to escape and be able to breathe. It was as though day turned to night. I'm sure you've heard the description already. It was unbelievable, like a war zone, and it still remains looking like a war zone down, down uh, further from here. We've been moved now twice. The media has had better rain than most people. As you probably see, people are walking northward past me because the police are continuing to evacuate people north. They've said there, there, there are added risks of other explosions, possibly gas leaks as well. And so, They've continued to move us, and also they've tried as best they can with the amount of emergency personnel that they have on hand to actually wrangle crowds. I don't know if you can see the dust that's still blowing around, uh, but what that usually is at this point is, is dust that's uh, debris that's on the ground. When emergency vehicles go tearing past us, they stir up these huge clouds of debris. We've not been told the exact number of casualties, but I have tried to stop a number of emergency personnel uh, coming through to ask them, what can you tell me? And, and most of them on the run just say hundreds hundreds, hundreds. Another emergency worker, an EMT, said he was down there at the time that he was evacuating as well. He also said that he never in his life has seen anything like this, nor does he ever want to. He said it looks like war and it looks like hell. Um, we've also been told there are four staging areas in this immediate southern Manhattan area. Chelsea Pier, if you're uh, familiar with that, is over on the Hudson River. We've been told that that's going to be one of the main areas for casualties. And apart from that, it's extremely difficult to get information Cell phone signals are very difficult to get, as you can imagine. Thousands and thousands of people from all over the world are trying to connect with people here in Manhattan to see if they're safe. As I'm talking to you via my cell phone, I, I hear my cell phone going off every 30 seconds or so. Um, so it's extremely difficult to get any communication in or out of here. And it's even tougher to get the police or the emergency personnel to give us information as well. I can tell you also that the uh, surrounding vicinities from uh, New Jersey, the states that surround New, New York, Upper New York, all of the counties that surround New York, they have all uh, responded. Their vehicles have all been in here. This has been a constant parade of emergency vehicles. We've even seen Port Authority transit workers acting as traffic cops and, and, and acting as, as emergency personnel. Let me just hear what we're hearing. They want everyone north. They're afraid of an, I have another building, what? Tell me what the concern is, ma'am. We're being told that well, there's, Ashley, Ashley, we there's can a potential of another bomb, or at least another... Yes? Ashley, we can hear you loud and clear, so we're going to keep on talking to you until we lose pictures. So just stick with us here, if you will. Um, do you think the emergency services right. were aware of the fact that there could, in fact, be a building collapse? Did they appear to be evacuating yeah, people let me, from the uh, let, me from no, let me ask. Let me ask. Please go. We're asking you. Uh, is there a there's a concern of, of another explosion. We're okay, going to have to actually, break down this area and leave. This is the third time this has happened. Okay, well, we want you to be safe. So thank you yes. very much for taking the time to, uh, to join us. And uh, you get into a safe area with you and your crew. Thank you for now. That was NBC correspondent okay, Ashley Bamfield right. updating us on the very latest from the streets of Manhattan. Let's now go live to Washington, D.C. and look at the pictures there. We see there the smoke still rising. 
despite uh, the best efforts of all the fire crews there at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., they've been uh, attempting to uh, douse those flames for uh, hours now.